Now in this video we're going to make a uh, dual band omnidirectional dipole antenna for uh, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Now I've got a dual band uh, antenna here, this is from uh, TP-Link. Um, this one has a little bit more game than the uh, normal ones, it's got uh, the sleeve here at the bottom which is the ground, this sleeve at the top which is the main active driven element but it also has a uh, piece of tubing coming out from the center of this to give it a li little bit more gain. Uh, it's not quite 5 dB uh, of gain like uh, the normal uh, traditional uh, dipoles that have uh, a loading coil for instance and they're a little bit longer. Just gives it a little bit more kick over the uh, 3 dB that these two would give. Now things are a little bit different for uh, a dual band uh, antenna like this and we have to use different measurements uh, this one uh, is we're going to kind of build one like this and I suppose that uh, you could use the measurements that I give you in this video to make this one but we're going to extend on this a little bit and I want to try and hit a uh, omnidirectional dual band antenna that operates around 5 dB because to be quite honest with you if you see a lot of uh, panel antennas and uh, patch antennas that sort of thing that are dual band but you don't see many omnidirectional uh, antennas that are dual band so that's what we're going to cover in this video today now the wavelength that we're going to be using to construct this antenna is 21.5 millimeters long but as important as the wavelength is also the diameter of the tubing now this is six millimeter diameter tubing you can go up a little bit more to seven um, no lower than this though no lower than six uh, so between uh, seven and six is optimal if you use anything that's wider then uh, you have to uh, play around with the uh, length of the wavelength that you're using so if you stick to the measurements that i'm showing you in this video you'll be fine so remember the wavelength we're using is 21.5 millimeters i've got two sleeves here that's going to form the uh, basis of our antenna and I've got another sleeve here which is uh, half wavelength so this is uh, the same length as those two combined and that's going to be the top of our antenna um, to separate these two the quarter wavelength to the half wavelength I've got a loading coil here now I've gone for a much wider loading coil than you would typically see I've uh, copied this uh, from a uh, collinear antenna this is a loading coil that's uh, 10 millimeters in diameter with its single coil there and uh, the wire is also 1.5 millimeters thick so how we achieve uh, a much more broadband antenna comes down to uh, the thickness of the material so you can see where I'm going with this um, increasing uh, the thickness with the diameter of the tubing increasing the thickness with the diameter of the loading coil here I'm hoping that will achieve uh, a nice antenna that will work in both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and be omnidirectional and give around 5 dB of gain as for the tubing as I said this is a 6 millimeters diameter tubing I think it has a wall of around uh, 0.5 millimeters not sure might be a little bit less but it's the diameter that really does matter um, I'm using brass here but you can just as easily use copper I just prefer to work with uh, brass uh, the, the electrical uh, constant between brass and copper yeah copper is a better conductor but uh, you're not going to see uh, any difference between a brass one and a copper one in the real world you need some really sensitive equipment to measure that kind of thing so uh, this tubing you can pick up off ebay pretty cheap um, i'm going to use this short pigtail here it has an sma already crimped onto it that's going to form the uh, basically the skeleton of our antenna so with these uh, materials here that's what we're going to use to construct our uh, hopefully 6 db of gain dual band antenna now the first thing I'm going to do is uh, prepare my sleeves here and I've already done one here that you can see and we need to solder one end up and drill a small hole through the centre. Now we don't want to completely fill this with solder because it's the open sleeve that uh, makes this antenna work and uh, there is a little technique to do this that I've come up with. Now I've got some copper tape here, this is uh, copper tape that I picked up from the garden uh, centre, this is uh, to stop slugs getting into plants, you can buy it off eBay but uh, to be honest with you it's much cheaper in the garden centre than it is 
off of eBay and I need a little bit of this copper not too much that much should be fine and what I'm going to do is fold it back on itself on the sticky side and then fold it again and what I'm going to do is put that down my tube and then uh, compact it down with this drill bit here And then what I can do is flood solar over that and it gives me a nice base at the bottom here, nice and closed. Strong enough structure so I can uh, drill a little hole through it and uh, then we can connect everything together. Now all three of the tubes are prepared and ready to go. You can see that I've drilled holes through the centres there so we can... So uh, correction and uh, this is what you should have. You should have two with the little holes through and this one where I've just tinned up the edge of the tube in here um, I mean this is a new antenna uh, this is the uh, fourth one that I've built I've tested I've built three tested those three and this is the build that I'm showing so I haven't built many of these so an easy mistake to make but this is what you want you want uh, your short ground one with just a little bit of solder around the edge and then your two other elements blocked off with a little hole through the middle so now I'm going to trim away uh, the outer braid so we can solder the outer braid to our ground sleeve here and I kind of want it on this position, position here I don't want too much of the coax at the bottom here so it's all flippy floppy um, yeah this pigtail's a little bit too long you don't need it to be that long but uh, I like to uh, remove rather than uh, find out I've got something too small and then add later so we're going to prepare the coax for the outer braid so we can solder it onto the end of our tube here so position it so we've got it about there so you can see how much uh, of that outer braid I've kept behind I've got a little bit here fanned out and we can flood that with solder and then I've got all this that we don't actually need but don't throw this away because it's really good for solder wick with a little bit of flux on I never buy solder wick and once you've got your coax of course make sure you pop your sleeve over the coax before we start to flooding solder on here I've lost count how many times I've uh, gone ahead flooded solder on here and then realized I hadn't uh, popped my sleeve over the top and now what I'm going to do is flood solder onto that outer braid to give us a nice grounding and because we've already uh, pre-tinned the edge of that uh, ground sleeve it's going to be really easy to solder this in place then and then once you get the uh, outer braid tinned up it's time to make the two so again a little bit of solder just to get that solder flowing that we've already uh, pre-tinned in there and to tidy everything up just the uh, Dremel with a sanding drum on there and just run it around the outer edge just to uh, tidy everything up now I'm going to move on to the uh, loading coil now and basically we need to uh, solder this piece which is uh, moving on to our driven element away from our ground and I want to solder it on like this not quite touching uh, this piece here because if we do then uh, we're basically shorting the antenna out I want to get it as close as I can though because anything that protrudes above the sleeve will start radiating RF so I want to keep it as close as possible but without touching as for the loading coil itself this is just a really really simple one 10 millimeters in diameter that works really well with 50 ohm impedance uh, 1.5 millimeter uh, wire here this is uh, brazing rod 1.5 millimeter and you can bend this around something try and find something that is uh, like 8 millimeters diameter because then uh, after you uh, release the pressure after bending this you'll then get a uh, 10 millimeter ring there or you know just round about 10 millimeters as close as you can get it working by hand and you can see how I've bent these in as well here 
with this pattern just so we keep everything nice and straight and then we've got a nice uh, uniform straight form factor with the antenna and when you're bending this as well just make sure you've got uh, some nice lengths to this you want this to be uh, a little bit longer than uh, your uh, quarter wavelength that you're working with um, this one's a little bit long but as I say can always snip away So hopefully you can see here, I've got it really, really close there, but it's not touching and uh, that brass runs straight down the middle of the tubing. Also, uh, if you're worried about uh, this touching on the inside of here, what you can always do is add a little bit of epoxy down there as well. Once you've uh, finished all your soldering job, just uh, to, uh, you know, stop this from touching the inside of that sleeve there. Now next what I want to do is solder on the uh, half wavelength of tubing here as you can see and we're soldering that on from the bottom so I don't need all this length so I can cut a lot of that away and just have a small piece there and pre-tin everything so we can solder it up in about that position there again not quite touching here but just around there. And now that we've soldered uh, the half wavelength in place on top of that loading coil you can see what I've done there and we've got the tube down in there so now we just need to make these two together to complete our antenna now I just want to show you what I've done here soldering uh, getting a strong solder joint like this is much the same as gluing it's all about surface area so I've twisted this inner braid around as you can see there just to make myself a little soldering cup and give it a little bit more surface area to solder onto the bottom of here. So I'm now going to flood this with solder and trim away this extra bit here. And now because everything's pre-tinned, a little bit of solder on the end of my iron. And I'm just going to make the two with the power of heat. And because effectively this is uh, our weakest point in the antenna, I've got a little bit of heat shrink tubing which I'll just shrink around there just to give it a little extra support. Now this is our antenna effectively uh, finished. If you wanted to keep it like this, I would uh, suggest putting a little bit of epoxy down in there. Just add a little bit more strength to this as well. Just making sure that this can't come into contact with uh, the inside of the tube. Possibly a little bit of epoxy down there as well, just to give that a little bit of strength. But you can also dip this in uh, plastic dip that uh, works really well as well um, you know do a few passes a little bit like uh, how you would make a candle and uh, that gives really good protection uh, a question that comes up on some of my older videos when it comes to spray paint or plastic dip uh, will it affect the uh, frequency of the antenna now this is a question that yes it will but in no meaningful way that you would notice um, certainly the equipment that I've got here in this lab I would not be able to, uh, you know, definitively um, measure that uh, difference that uh, the dielectric of the paint or, you know, the uh, plastic dip would make to the overall frequency of the antenna. It really doesn't make that much difference unless you're using some kind of paint that has uh, metal inside uh, or contained in it of course uh, it's a little bit of a I know where it's come from on the internet I don't want to say who first said it a few years ago but uh, yes the question is it does make a difference but the answer is no meaningful difference that you'll ever notice so you don't have to worry about it so here we are over on the test bench then let's see how good our antenna will perform at 5 gigahertz and 2.4 we'll look at the 5 gigahertz frequency first then we'll take a look at the 2.4 so here we are then we're scanning from 4.9 gigahertz over here all the way up to uh, 5.9 gigahertz over here we can see that we've got this little dip here right bang in the middle of the Wi-Fi spectrum at 5 gigahertz there's 5 gigahertz there and then we can go up a little bit 5.1 gigahertz there so lovely little dip right where I wanted it for 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi you've got to remember as well that when you're uh, making a dual band antenna a dual band antenna is always a compromise so it's never going to be excellent at uh, both frequencies 
it'll just be usable at both frequencies. So here's the output on the uh, 2.4 gigahertz then and I have to say it's uh, looking really nice. We're scanning from 2.2 gigahertz over here to 2.9 gigahertz over here and we've got this lovely dip here in the middle and the cursor is on 245 gigahertz just there. It dips down to uh, a peak at 2.42 gigahertz so really really nice for 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi really really nice much better than uh, it is in the 5 gigahertz but again as I said building a dual band antenna is always a compromise between the two frequencies but yeah I'm happy with that that's nice so I have to say I am uh, really pleased with this particular build as I said you don't really see high gain uh, dual band antennas omnidirectional ones uh, out there on the market I mean I've never really come across a uh, high gain omnidirectional dual band antenna like this but uh, you know if you've got a uh, Wi-Fi router and uh, you've just got say a couple of outputs for the antenna and your Wi-Fi router is dual band but it's using that one output for both frequencies then you are kind of limited uh, to what you can do with that but uh, yeah a high gain dual band omnidirectional antenna can come in uh, real handy and uh, yeah it didn't take me uh, that many attempts at designing this to come up with a uh, working version uh, just because uh, I've worked with these before and I know the measurements of this part of the antenna here and then extending it out using these measurements here and other things that I know about uh, you know where uh, omnidirectional antennas like this it was pretty straightforward and this one is uh, with the two quarter wavelengths here and then uh, half a wavelength here I've also built one that's got uh, a three quarter wavelength here probably giving you half a dB of gain more over this one this one also works uh, really really nice a little bit of a better waveform in the five gigahertz uh, um, area as well I have to say but uh, there's a few other things um, I can try with these antennas in the future to make them even more uh, high gain because we can stack up just like you can with a uh, collinear antenna and uh, even uh, going back to the TP-Link one wherever I've put it here we can also look at uh, possibly doing this here and having a kind of a sleeved uh, dipole effect on the end as well to maybe get a little bit more gain so there's a few things that uh, we can do with this to uh, improve the gain but uh, as they stand now around 5 dB of gain I'm really pleased how they turned out so hopefully uh, you've enjoyed this video and if you do know of uh, any manufacturers uh, that uh, make a dual band omnidirectional antenna like this please uh, let us know in the comments especially if you've got any uh, spec sheets on them but uh, yeah if you want to have a go at making one of these really really simple I mean uh, the measurement uh, the quarter wavelength that I'm working off is uh, 21.5 millimeters um, if you did enjoy it please give it a uh, thumbs up comments or questions drop them below um, this by the way came from somebody asking a question over on the uh, antennas Facebook page and they wanted to know if I could make the uh, blade antenna dual band and this is my attempt at doing that with the uh, blade antenna didn't work by the way but uh, that's when I uh, came up with uh, this uh, design which does work so yeah if you uh, fancy uh, contributing over on that per Facebook page you're more than welcome to uh, pop along there where uh, it's a really nice site everybody's friendly over there but uh, yeah hopefully you did enjoy the video give it a thumbs up if you want to help support this channel on patreon then the uh, link will be in the description and hopefully you'll join me on the next one